and welcome to Tina's Joyful Kitchen. I am so happy to have you here with me today. Uh, I'm gonna introduce myself and then I'm gonna tell you what we're going to make. And we are going to have a good time. But before we do that, I gotta take care of a little housekeeping because every time I do this, every the, 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 the um, technology is on my side. If the internet goes out for some cray cray reason, don't worry, stay right there, we'll be right back. Also, <clears throat> any of the information that I give you is not medical advice. Go seek a doctor or a nurse if you have other medical questions after this. And what else do I want to tell you? Oh, I've done a lot of research. And look, we all love to multitask and we're thinking we're getting so much done. But guess what the truth is? When we multitask, we literally experience less joy. We literally experience less joy. And if you haven't guessed it with the name of my program, Tina's Joyful Kitchen, my life is all about joy. So I'm going to challenge each and every one of you to pick up your phones. I'm doing it right now and turn it on silent. Turn it upside down and set that phone aside. Close out all of your browsers and be with me 100% throughout this fun, amazing, joyful cooking lesson. And I promise you, you will experience a ton of joy. So if you're in to experience joy and be with me 100%, type I'm in in that chat. Go ahead and type I'm in in that chat. If you're in to be with me 100% through our cooking class, type I'm in in that chat. Got to see who's there and who's with me and who we're going to have fun with today. I've got a couple of I'm ins. Good. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right. So I always take a look at how many people I have in the room and how many I, I'm ins I have. And if it's only a quarter, I just have to shut up. And I can't go on any further. We need more I'm ins. Let's see who else is in. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. For I feel the energy. I feel the love. It's awesome. There's so many of you in the chat. Today, we are going to make marvelous midday meals. And we're going to do that in minutes. And we're also going to talk about herbs and how to use those wonderful herbs that we have grown. Who here has? grown their own herbs. I know you had an herb class. Put a one in the chat if you've grown your own herbs. Put a one in the chat if you have grown your own herbs. Yeah, a lot of you have grown your own herbs. So we're going to learn how to use herbs in our cooking and, and everything that we do. I cannot wait. I love, I love the smell of that basil. It's amazing. So we're going to make salads in a jar and we're going to make our own homemade dressing with some fresh herbs. We're going to make some zoodle salad. That's zucchini noodles. Who here loves to zoodle? I love to zoodle. I'm going to teach you the easiest way on the planet Earth to zoodle and make a cold zoodle salad. And then we're going to have a lot of fun. Who loves popsicles? I love popsicles, but I don't like all of the junk that comes along with it. So we're going to make some fun popsicles together. All right. You guys ready? You guys ready? I'm going to introduce myself super duper duper quick. Again, my name is Tina McDermott. I call myself the lazy, inspirational chef. I'm a speaker and I'm a weight loss coach. This is my love. This is my passion for the past 20 plus years. And there's no place that I'd rather be than right here, right now in my kitchen, teaching all of you how to, how to live a life that's free, that's healthy, that's vibrant and free from dis-ease, free from capital D, capital I, capital E with a small T's because we want to live it. We want to live our lives. We don't want to diet and teach you how to find joy in the kitchen, even if you don't know how to cook or like to cook. All right. If you guys are, if you all guys and gals, if you all are ready to get started, put, I don't know, what are we going to put? Start in the chat. Give me a start button. Give me the easy button. Give me the start easy button. Give me the easy button. Anybody got an easy button for me? Put start in that chat box. Put start in that chat box. I want to see it. I want to feel the love. I got a couple of people who want me to start. Okay, let's get started. Let's get the party started. We're going to start with salads in a jar. We want food that's fast and we can have fast food right in our refrigerators. All you need to do is take a few minutes to prepare everything. And now it's lunchtime, you go in your fridge, you grab and you eat. It's wonderful to have healthy, fast food in the fridge. I work from home. I've been working from home for several years. I, I did have a studio, I closed that down. And even working from home, it's difficult. I don't wanna 
go in the refrigerator and take the carrots and the celery and, and, and the onions and take all the individual things out just to make one salad. It's just me working from home. So I make all of these salads in a jar. I make five of them for the week. And I literally do this often. And, uh, and now I've got fast food. Put fast food in the fridge. If you want fast food that's healthy in your refrigerator, put fast food in that chat. If you want fast food in your refrigerator, fast food people, fast, healthy food. So it starts with getting some mason jars. I get the wide mouth mason jars and they come with a metal lid. I, I throw those away. I don't like them. My sister loves them. I hate them. Um, I opt because they get rusty and then you end up eating rust. I get these plastic lids. You can buy them right online, Target, Walmart, Amazon, Bed Bath & Beyond. You can get these plastic lids. They, the, now they're making black ones that actually seal, uh, but these do not have a seal. So you don't want to turn this upside down. You don't want to turn it upside down anyway. And when we're making, thank you, like fast food. When we're making salads in a jar, it, it, we want to start with the dressing because the idea of the dressing is going to be at the bottom. Then we're going to put hard vegetables in there to kind of marinate. Then we're going to put softer vegetables. Then we're going to put protein and then our lettuce. If we want a little cheese, we can put a little cheese at the very top. Okay. And then when you go to eat it, you're going to shake it up and eat it right out of the jar. Or you can pour it in a bowl and eat it out of a bowl. Okay. I'm going to put my jars to the side and we're going to start with our dressing. Here we go. We're going to start with our dressing and I'm going to make a fresh herb Italian dressing with olive oil and balsamic vinegar. I like apple cider vinegar as well in my dressings. Now, what is your favorite vinegar? Is it apple cider? Is it balsamic? Is it red wine vinegar? I love red wine vinegar as well. What is your favorite vinegar? Go ahead and put that in the chat box. Plastic mason jars, since the family tends to drop things. Yes, but make sure that those plastic jars are not, um, they don't have BPA, okay? Um, balsamic, sh oh, sherry vinegar. Oh, I haven't had sherry vinegar in forever. You like the fruity ones, yeah. Oh, the sweet Vidalia onion. I Oh, that sounds really good. Now, so you can use whatever acid you want. You can even use lemon. You don't. Okay, they don't have BPA. Is that what you're saying? Good, 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 good. All right, so I'm going to take one of the mason jars. Why dirty something else? Remember, I'm lazy. I don't like to dirty too many things. And I'm also inspirational. So I want to use whatever I find in the, at the market. And in here, I'm going to put some olive oil. Make sure this, I decant the olive oil. I get it in a big container. I go through it really quick. And the idea is you want about two to four tablespoons per jar, right? And it's two parts olive oil to one part acid. That's kind of the idea, okay? I don't like a lot of the acid in there. Some people do, some people don't. Something crazy happens with me. I cough when I put too much vinegar in my salad dressings. And my husband laughs at me. He goes, what in the world are you doing? Because he'll put like a whole cup of, I'm teasing, maybe a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar on his salads. And then he drinks it at the very end. So, and oh, I forgot to tell you also, I'm, you know, I'm lazy. I don't always measure. I don't always measure, but I love these mason jars because they have the measurements right on them. And I, it's not even a cup. It's a half a cup and there's four tablespoons per quarter cup. So I probably have about six tablespoons in here because it's about three fourths of a cup. So I measured it probably pretty good. And next I'm going to put just a half a teaspoon of some sea salt in here. Now, can anyone, does anyone know why I'm using sea salt versus regular table salt? Can anyone guess? I love lemon juice as well. Can anyone guess why I'm using sea salt versus the, any other salt? Anybody, if you don't know, the, if you think you know the answer, put a one. If you don't know the answer, put a zero. If you just don't know the answer, put a zero. I just kind of want to know where you guys are with that. Yeah, okay. So processed salt, the white stuff that you get is sodium chloride. It literally is processed. And my philosophy on eating, if it doesn't walk, fly, grow, or swim, don't eat it. And the more that man has processed our food, the worse it is for us. Sodium chloride is literally highly, highly processed. And I don't know if it's bleached, don't quote me on that, but it definitely elevates your blood pressure. 
sea salt. There's a beautiful, this is pink Himalayan sea salt over here. Over here, I think I have Murray River flaky salt. I have both salts. I love them both. Um, have 78 plus minerals that your body is lacking because even if you're organic, the soil is lacking in the minerals. So our bodies end up being lacked, lack, end up lacking in the minerals. Also the water that we drink, whether it's filtered, purified, all of it, don't ever drink distilled. It has no minerals. You'll die if you drink only that, that uh, you need the minerals in order to open up the cells to be hydrated, okay? So sea salt is where it's at. I don't care what kind of sea salt you get, but definitely use some sea salt. Also, you can always add salt, but you can't take it away. So the next thing that we're going to, I'm gonna move this for now. We have our salt, our pepper, our olive oil, our balsamic vinegar. So now I'm gonna use some fresh garlic. I could use some powdered garlic in here. That's fine, but why do you think fresh garlic is so much better than say the powdered or like at least it's not onions. You know what the funny thing is, Brittany? Onions don't make me cry. So what do you think is better? The jarred garlic, the powdered garlic, or the fresh garlic? Yes, it's not, well, it's not really a trick question, but it's a question. What do you think is better? The fresh, the dried, or the powdered garlic? The fresh, the dried, or the jarred garlic? Put it in the chat. Let me say it. Yeah, fresh. Fresh, oh, fresh. It, yeah, fresh with flavor. You know, I use the, the, the powdered garlic when I'm making a spice rub or something. But when I'm making something like this, use fresh garlic. It boosts your immune system. It boosts your immune system and it's phenomenal for you. I had a little thing of garlic, here it is. So I just wanna put that aside. Now, I use my garlic press. I love a garlic press, it's so much easier. I could have left this skin on, but it actually presses better without the skin. So I just cleaned the skin off and I put the garlic right in there. Now, <clears throat> when I was a little girl, I was under the table playing with the kitty cats and my dad was trying to get me to eat. This is not the way to get your kid to eat. He reached under and he put something in my mouth and you know, you're know, you five years old, you eat what your dad puts in your mouth. It was a piece of garlic. He will not admit it to this day that he did that. But to this day, I don't like raw garlic. These salads in a jar are gonna go to a girlfriend of mine tomorrow and she likes garlic. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll roast garlic, I like it roasted. It's wonderful. And if, and, if, and if anything, I'll show you when I make the zoodles, what I do to get a little bit of the garlic pizzazz, but no biting into garlic. Even when I make pesto, I do not put fresh garlic. I roast it. We do roasted garlic. Next, we're going to do some herbs. Okay. Next, we're going to do some herbs and we're going to put an herbs in our salad dressing. Okay. What herbs do you like in your salad dressing? Somebody type in the chat or all of you. What is the difference in the jarred and the fresh herbs? Oh, um, entire family is allergic to garlic. Oh, I'm so sorry, Tara, I'm sorry. Um, yes, jarred is easier, but it doesn't have the immune boosting properties of the fresh garlic. It's also preserved, uh, not preserved, it's uh, they put high heat on it and it just, even the dry, even more so, it just doesn't have the immune boosting properties that your body deserves. And it doesn't have that pow flavor either. It doesn't have that pow of flavor. So <clears throat> what you're gonna see here, you see I have a paper towel that it was wet. And I went, no, I didn't have enough herbs in my garden. For some reason, my basil died. I had to go buy a basil plant. Um, I can never grow rosemary. What good Italian can grow, grow rosemary? I don't know why. Um, but I went to my girlfriend's and she had some pineapple sage, it's pineapple sage. She had some oregano. She had some, and I put it in a paper towel so it would kind of stay fresh for the next day. And it did, it looks just like when I picked it. This is thyme, her thyme, she just had a little bit of thyme left, that's the thyme. And <clears throat> here's our rosemary. And <clears throat> we're gonna put whatever fresh herbs we want in our dressing. Here is mint. If you want to do some mint, this is lovely. I wouldn't put that in a salad, but I might put that in some popsicles. I might that, I do have cilantro, but you know what, before I chop up these herbs, I want to talk to you about something. Okay. This cilantro I bought at Whole Foods yesterday. 
And the way that I've always preserved my herbs is I put them in a jar with water and I leave them on the counter for a couple of days. Well, apparently this cilantro was pretty old and it's not very happy right now. I'm gonna see if I can revive some of it. I'm gonna to have to pick out a lot of the dead stuff. It didn't look anywhere near this yesterday, but I couldn't tell. It looked fine yesterday when I bought it at the store, but today, mm -mm, not very good. And so my cilantro, yeah, I can pick some things out of it. But if I put it in the refrigerator, it might not have gotten so yucky wilty. So that's another way to store your herbs is some water in the refrigerator or on the counter if you're gonna use them in a couple of days. The cilantro has a scent to it where the parsley, nothing, it, doesn't, it smells like parsley, I think. Um, but yeah, it smells like parsley. Look how pretty the parsley is. Same store when I bought that cilantro. Uh, so you got that trick on how to store your herbs. The other thing I wanna tell you about herbs is that my grandma would always tell me, si lava cuando si usa. And in English, that means wash it right before you're about to use it. Because the second that you wash it, it starts to um, activate the enzymes in the food. It also introduces bacteria and it starts to wilt. So you know at rest restaurants, at supermarkets, when they have the spray that comes down to wet the vegetables, most often that's not the right thing to do because it also depletes it from some vitamins and minerals. This one was probably sprayed a little bit too much. Very sad cilantro that I may, I may not use. And here I have some lovely basil. Unfortunately, my basil just died. It did not do well this year. And I found this gorgeous plant at the farmer's, well, not at the farm, at Whole Foods yesterday. And when it comes to basil with most of your herbs, who here grows herbs indoors and who grows them outdoors? If you go ahead, put indoors or outdoors in, actually both outdoors, but you have them indoors and outdoors. Okay. Um, once it starts going to seed, pinch off that seed part and otherwise it'll go get bitter. Okay. It'll get bitter and you don't want it to get bitter. Like cilantro goes to seed. You could eat the seeds and grind them up for the coriander, right? But then the cilantro doesn't taste good, but pinch that off and you'll grow more. So I'm going to pinch off the head of my, but leave some of the leaves, right? I'm going to pinch that off. Now it will still grow because there's still leaves on that branch, right? I'm going to pinch off the top here. I'm going to leave some of the leaves and we're going to, we're going to use some of this. I'm not going to use all of it. So um, I love basil, love the smell of it. It reminds me of Italy. Now, if yours gets leggy, just pinch them back, pinch them back, pinch them back, and they won't, they, because they're going to seed. But maybe it's the end of the season and it's time for them to go to seed as well. But if you pinch them back, see what happens, and that will help a lot. Just cut off all of the dead stuff. There's something I want to tell you. I, I lived in Italy for a while, and I lived with a family from Genoa, in Genoa. And they said, who here loves pesto? Put pesto in the chat if you love pesto. If you love pesto, put pesto in the chat. He told me the secret to Genovese pesto, which is supposed to be the famous pesto in all of Italy, is Genovese pesto. And he said, Tina, don't wash the basil. Even before you're about to cook it, do not wash it. He's like, you don't want that water on the leaves. You don't want the water in the pesto. Hopefully the rain would have taken care of, you know, cleaning it. If there's dirt, of course, he says, knock it off but he says, don't wash it. Now, uh, you know, if it's organic, I can understand that. But if you're getting it from the store and you don't know if it's organic, this one's organic, organically grown, help from the farm. So, I mean, I'm okay with not washing it, but that's fine. I think that, anyhow, I'm just telling you what his tip was. I'm telling you what his tip was. What do we want in our dressing? Let's go back to the dressing here before I just talk forever because I love to talk. Obviously, this is what I do. I'm going to put some thyme and some oregano in my salad dressing. Now, I'm going to show you how to strip. See how this oregano started to go to seed. You don't want to, sometimes the seeds are good, like thyme leaves are delicious. Thyme leaves are, are flowers are delicious, but some of them aren't. So I'm just going to strip it. And do you see what I did? I'm grabbing it, grabbing it at the tip over here. And you're gonna very gently grab your fingers around it, very gently and pull through. 
And there you have it, your oregano leaves. I normally have an up close camera, but I ran out of time to set it up today. I'm so sorry, but it's all good. Can everyone see my, my cutting board okay? Everyone can see this? Yeah, there we go. It was all crooked. There we go. So I'm gonna put some oregano in there and I'm gonna put some thyme. I'm gonna put some oregano and some thyme. I love thyme. Thyme is tiny. So it's very tedious to strip the thyme. And since I only had little small sprigs of the thyme, I'm gonna do it with my thumbnail very, very, very gently, very gently. Which herbs learned recently how to make it with oregano? Oh, the pesto with oregano. You can make pesto with parsley. My sister puts parsley in, in um, all of the pesto that she makes. But yeah, you can put oregano in your pesto. You can put anything. I put, I make a kale pesto and I use almonds. I don't even use, I don't use pine nuts at all. One time my girlfriend lost her sense of taste. This was about eight years ago from eating pine nuts that she got from a different country. I'm not going to name anything. I don't want to be political anything here, but uh, so I've not touched pine nuts since then because if they came from that country, most people were getting, losing their sense of taste from eating pine nuts. Um, look it up, it's actually a thing. Uh, so I use walnuts, a softer nut. Sometimes I use almonds and I make a kale pesto. You can make a spinach pesto. You can make it whatever you want, whatever you want. The world is your oyster because just do what you're inspired to do. So I got all the thyme in there, got all the thyme. I don't think I wanna put rosemary in my salad dressing. That just doesn't sound appealing to me. Although if I had to pick a favorite herb, it would be definitely rosemary. In Italy, you find bushes and bushes like it's the front hedge of people's houses is rosemary. Last time I was there, we were, uh, I wasn't at the house. I was someplace else renting an Airbnb and we, we needed some rosemary. So we just went outside to the bush and picked some rosemary and away we went. So I've got oregano and some thyme in there and you can put in whatever fresh herbs that you so desire. You can get a whisk and whisk this up, or you can just shake it up in the jar. Let's not make things complicated here, okay? Shake it up in the jar. The other thing you can do if you have these wonderful fresh herbs is you can do this instead of olive oil, use yogurt. Yeah, use yogurt. It comes out beautiful. It's like a ranch dressing. And I would use lemon juice instead of balsamic vinegar and make a nice ranch dressing. And yes, I would put that garlic in there as well. Okay. So now it's time to divvy up my dressing amongst my three salad jars. We're gonna put two to three tablespoons per jar. A lot of dressing in here. So we're just gonna keep pouring until they look even. Oh, a little bit more. There we go. We'll just do that like so. There we go. So we got our salad dressing. Now we have to do the crunchy vegetables. Crunchy vegetables are next. And you want to put vegetables that can marinate, right? Carrots can marinate. So we're going to do carrots next. Okay, we're going to trim off the ends. I scrubbed these. And I want you to remember something. Round things make them flat. Round things make them flat so that you save your fingers. Got that? Make them flat so you can save your pretty little fingers as you're chopping that. Okay, are you guys having fun? Yeah, rosemary is good for memory. If you guys are having fun, put fun in the chat. If you guys are having fun, put fun in that chat box. Put fun in that chat box if you are having a good time. And again, any questions that you have, good, a lot of you are having fun. Any questions that you have, please put them in that chat box. P please feel free to, chat with me. You know, I keep dropping my scraps on the floor. Does anybody have an idea of where I'm putting my scraps? Anybody have an idea of where I'm putting my scraps? Anybody? Anybody? Compost. Yes, ma'am. And remember, I'm lazy, so my carrots do not have to be the same size. Doesn't matter to me. They just need to be small enough to fit into the top of my jar. That's it. Okay, what other vegetables are we going to put in here that are harder vegetables? What about some onions? I have this half of a Georgia sweet onion. 
It is better than any Vidalia onion I have ever had. Better than any Vidalia that I've ever had. So I had a half of that. I've got these beautiful scallions. Scallions can marinate, right? I'm gonna chop off those ends. So yeah, give things, to, put things in the compost. I just give, give it back to Mother Earth. Just give it back to Mother Earth. My community has a composting program that I have a composter in the backyard as well as a, a, a pile that I throw all of the scraps in because you just give it back to Mother Earth and she'll process it and do what needs to happen to it so that we can use it for next year's garden. And I literally just throw it in a pile and throw dirt on it and then the next year turn it you're supposed to turn it all the time but i'm lazy i do have one of those big com composters that you're supposed to turn and i turn it maybe once a month maybe once a week it all depends i feel bad because all the ants and all their babies get disturbed every time i turn it <laughs> anyhow i digress i digress what about some cucumber cucumber is on the harder side not as hard as carrots so i am not going to put them first I want to show you a trick. This is a trick my cousin taught me in Italy to get the bitterness out of cucumbers is you just take the top and you see how it got all frothy at the top there. So they say, she says, it's supposed to take the bitterness away. I haven't found that to be completely true, but I don't know. Skins tend to be a little tough on cucumbers. So being lazy, I'm not going to peel the whole thing. I'm just gonna peel as much as I feel like it. Um, yes, you can do a vegetable peeler or you can peel the way that I just peeled. It's the way I was taught since I was a kid to peel towards yourself. If you're not comfortable with that, then get a vegetable peeler. So a lot of seeds in this cucumber. If you don't like the seeds, take the seeds out, just cut them out, throw them in the compost. I don't mind them. I don't have a problem with them. So I'm just gonna put those right into our jars. I literally make five of these every Monday or a Sunday, depends. Now I'm gonna put some tomatoes because tomatoes are on the softer side and you don't want them right in the marinade. Personally, I don't like tomatoes in the refrigerator. So I'll add the tomatoes later. And these are some tomatoes that I got from a friend who has a farm and they needed to be eaten. And I forgot I had them when I was at the store last night and I bought these beautiful, where are they? have them somewhere here little red cherry tomatoes red cherry tomatoes and they where are they i washed them up too um and they taste like candy they're absolutely delicious absolutely delicious so a little bit of tomato what are the things what are the marinatable vegetables that you would put in your salad what marinatable vegetables would you put in your salad peppers oh i have a pepper here somewhere yeah we can do peppers what else? What else? What other merit? Olives. Yep, I've got some olives here. Put some olives in there. What else? Cauliflower. Yeah, why not? You cut them up small so that they're bite size for the salad, right? Cut them up small. What else? Kalamata olives specifically. Guess what? Oh, you know what? I am so silly. Look at this. I have to show you something. This is how silly willy I am. They're right in front of my eyes. They're right under my eyes those little beautiful, they taste like candy. They're amazing. They're so good. Um, I have some, look at this. I have Kalamata olives. I've caught them all olives. I could put in there. I also have this Giardiniera mix, Giardiniera actually in Italian, and it's this spicy olives and cauliflower and peppers. And we can put that in there, right? We can put that in there if we wanted to. We can put, what else? I have some peppers. I'll cut up a pepper put some pepper in there. See, if you're not doing all the talking like I'm doing, you can literally get all of this done within a half an hour. Okay. Time to sharpen my knife. Time to sharpen my knife. I can tell when it doesn't get through the skins really easy, it's time to sharpen the knife. A dull knife is a dangerous knife, people. So always get your knives sharpened. Always sharpen them. I got to see my dad really soon to get them, get them sharpened. All right. See, I'm not even particular about all of the seeds that I wash the outside of the pepper. There's a bunch of seeds here. Whatever. It's okay if they get in your salad. They'll just grow a pepper inside your tummy tum. My husband will always say, "Oh, you're gonna grow a watermelon." 
If you eat the watermelon seeds, you're gonna grow in a watermelon. Okay, there we go. So we've got all of our marinatable vegetables in there. And there's other vegetables that you can put in, broccoli. Um, when do you do egg? Oh, I'm gonna tell you that. How'd you know I was gonna talk about that next? How did you know? Next comes the protein. Next comes the protein, okay? And you can put anything from sardines and don't scoff at it. They're phenomenal for your brain, full of omega-3 fatty acids. Just make sure it's got olive oil in it and no other rancid oils. Maybe some tuna fish, maybe some rotisserie chicken that you got that you picked off of the chicken. What about eggs? Did somebody see my eggs back here? Is that why you said that? Did somebody see my eggs back there? I cooked my eggs in my Instant Pot, which is why my Instant Pot is back there. And I'll show you what I did. Who here has an Instant Pot? Put IP in the chat if you have an Instant Pot. If you have an Instant Pot, pot IP in the chat. Yeah, I love my Instant Pot. I put a cup of water at the bottom and I have this silicone basket. I put all the eggs in the basket, put it in, turn it on for five minutes let it sit for five minutes. And then I put it in a bowl of ice water. And then it's, they're really super easy to peel. Okay, then they're super easy to peel. I'll finish peeling that later. Okay. I put the eggs in too cold. I figured found my refrigerator too cold. So let them sit on the counter for five minutes before you put them in. So I have some hard boiled eggs that I am going to put in these salads. Hard boiled eggs are about six grams of protein per egg. And you need anywhere from maybe 15 to 20 grams of protein per meal, but you'll get the extra protein from the vegetables from a little cheese that's in there. Next, we're going to put some lettuce. What kind of lettuce do you like? Do you want baby arugula? Oh, my favorite. Do you like the sweet butter lettuce? This is my husband's favorite, the sweet butter lettuce. Um, he's not going to know that I put these in my salads. Um, actually, these are going to be for my friend. So we're going to put sweet butter lettuce in our at the very, very top. There we go. Don't worry. Just smash it down. Not a problem. Get it all in there. And now how many cups of vegetables do you think that you need on a daily basis? How many cups of vegetables do you think you need on a daily basis? Put it in the chat. Now, if I want to put basil in my salad, I would put the basil here at the very top. I wouldn't put it, the fresh basil in the dressing. I don't know why. It just I don't want it to get bruised and all of that. It'll taste better if I just leave, leave it at the top and then chop it up and put it at the top. Okay. All right. There we go. This one needs a little bit more lettuce. How many cups of vegetables do you think you need on a daily basis? Somebody said two. Somebody said six. Four to six. And dive iceberg, spring mix, spin. Yeah, all of them, all of them. Good. I'm having a hard time getting this one opened. I'm telling you, use muscles in the kitchen. So I'm going to put a little of arugula on top. Who loves arugula? Arugula is my favorite. One of my favorite lettuces on top of the butter lettuce. One of my favorites is arugula. I love arugula. Love the spiciness in it. It's actually very good for your liver. The more bitter, spicy things are, the better they are for your liver. So you see how I just shove them in at the top? It's no big deal. Shove it in. It's, it's not touching the dressing. So you don't have to worry about the salad getting yucky unless you topple the, the jar over and the salad, the dressing starts mixing with, with everything else. Now at the very top, if you want, you can, yeah, I love, love arugula. Um, you can put a little bit of cheese. This is some shredded, I'm not shredded, um, some goat cheese, some goat cheese crumbles. I'm just gonna put those right at the very top. And there you go, you're gonna get extra protein from the goat cheese, okay? So where are my lids? My lids are somewhere, here we go. And there we have it. The short of the long of it are salads in a jar. Who is, go who, who is here is going to make salads in a par jar? Put S-I-J, salads in a jar, S-I-A-J, S-I-J is good enough. Salads in a jar in the chat, put that in the chat or you can even type the whole thing out, type the whole thing. Oh, a lot of you are gonna make salads in a jar. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, let's move on to making some zoodles so that we have time to make the most fun thing, which are the popsicles, right? One, one question that came in, Tina. Yep. What about apples and nuts? Where would you put that at? Um, 
Good question. I would put the nuts with the protein and the apples right before it or after it. Yeah, because you don't want the apples to marinate. I don't think you want them to marinate. But yeah, I would put them at the bottom. I mean, the apples in the middle. Put the nuts and the apples in the middle. Good question. Great question, actually. Great question. An experiment. Exper I put strawberries in my salad. And if I had strawberries, I would put them at the very, very top because they're a little bit more on the delicate side. So yeah, I would put the strawberries at the top. Oh, some other notes about herbs on how to preserve them long term. You can get your herbs, tie them right here. Don't soak them in water first. If you're going to dry them, do not soak them in water, but tie them and hang them upside down and just let them air dry. Don't do huge bunches because it'll inhibit, I mean, it'll create mold. And if you wash them before you dry them, you'll have mold. Don't wash them. I know it sounds crazy. Just shake them off, get any dirt off of them that might be on them, tie them, hang them up somewhere in a dry, cool, dry place. And they say you can put some muslin around it to keep the bugs out, but it depends how much dust and bugs are you going to have where you're going to hang them. And they should dry up in a week or so. And then you just strip them like I showed you and put them in jars. That's what I do. The other thing I do is I'll get a tray and I'll just lay them all out on a tray and put them outside in the sun and let the sun dry them. It takes a day and I'll go out and I'll strip them. Also, I have a dehydrator if it's winter time and I have herbs, which is rare. Um, and I can just put them in the dehydrator for probably eight hours. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can chop them up really small or strip if they're already small, like the, uh, like the oregano or the mint, um, chop them up really small, stuff them into ice cube trays and pour broth on top, pour broth on top and freeze them. Take them out after a day, crack them and put them in a baggie, a Ziploc baggie, label the baggie broth. And this way, next time you're going to make a soup or a stew or even a cup of broth, you can pop an ice cube out, pour some hot water on it and have some nice broth, some herb broth or throw it into soups and stews and such. Isn't that a great idea? Isn't that a great idea? This is something I have for my Instant Pot. It's to make eggs. If you don't want to use your ice cube trays, you could always use these, but I would put plastic on the top and put it in the freezer so it doesn't get freezer taste. And if you're going to leave it in there for more than 24 hours, if it's only 24 hours, you'll be fine. It's not going to take on any other flavors, but that's anyhow, you get the idea. You get the idea. Would you put mint in broth? No. You'll, oh, cranberries in the salad will be good too, but no, I wouldn't put mint in the broth. I just had that so happened to have the mint in my hand. I think I forgot to put the basil on the top of the salads. I'll do that later. I'll put the basil on the top of the salads. Let's get to making some zoodles. Who wants to learn to make some zoodles? Put zoodles in the chat. Let me see zoodles in the chat. If you want to learn to make some zoodles, let me see zoodles in the chat. First thing I promised you was to teach you a little trick of mine with the garlic. Okay. If you don't want to have the the full on taste of garlic, but you want the, the essence of the garlic, right? You want the essence of the garlic. Uh, did you see how I pressed on my garlic to get the peel off? How super simple that was. Cut your garlic. Actually, it's already smashed. So it's in half. And this is all I'm going to do. I'm going to rub my bowl with the garlic, the open end of the garlic. Rub the bowl with the garlic. And now your zoodle salad is going to have the essence of garlic but not the garlic that you bite into, okay? Not the garlic, garlic that you get, bite into. My mom makes this fish called bakala. It's salted cod and you know, you have to take the salt out. You have to, it's, and then she chops up fresh garlic and puts parsley in it and she steams it with potatoes. It's wonderful until you bite into a big chunk of garlic that she put in there. Oh, sorry, I have a hard time with garlic. All right, zoodles, where are, I'm going to show you the best zoodler on the planet Earth. It's called a veggetti. Veggetti. I want to make sure we have enough time for this. And it's super simple. Look how simple this is. Make sure. Let's see if that one is going to fit. That one might not fit. Let me get this skinnier. Oh my gosh, they're both fat zucchinis. Oh well. I hope that these fat zucchinis fit through my veggetti. Otherwise, we're not going to have 
Oh, it fits. Here we go. So I cut off the little tiny end, not this piece. And I'm just going to spiralize. Look how easy this is. Pull it out every couple of swirls. Otherwise, you'll get zoodles that are way too long. They're like 20 miles long if you don't pull it out every once in a while. Okay. I never buy zoodles already pre-made. A, I think they're too expensive for what they are. And B, once you cut open the vegetable, one side is a thicker than the other. That's why I switched it over. Once you cut open a vegetable, you start to activate the enzymes and it starts to be depleted. So by the time that they've zoodled it and then you eat it a day or two later, you're probably getting less than half of the nutrients that would have been in the fresh zucchini. So this is how easy this salad is. It is super easy. Yes, you eat it raw. Yes, it tastes delicious. And you just zoodle away. Now you can zoodle carrots. You can zoodle potatoes. You can zoodle um, beets, uh, apples. What else? Sweet potatoes. Um, anything that you can slip in here and zoodle. I have a big zoodle or two. I despise it because you have to suction cup it to the countertop. Sometimes it doesn't suction cup properly and it's too many pieces to wash. When I found my veggetti, I was in heaven. Who here has a veggetti? If you don't, put a one in the chat if you don't. And I will put a sad face in the chat. You can get this on Amazon. You can get it Bed Bath & Beyond. I found it Bed Bath & Beyond for 10 bucks, Amazon 10 bucks. I bought it at Aldi's one time for like three bucks just to show you how much they price gouge you on these things. Yeah, so Vegetti, get yourself a Vegetti. And who says you don't use muscles in the kitchen? I'm telling you, I'm using all my forearm muscles right now. But you see why I don't want you to get rid of that? Because you need a handle. This thing comes with uh, a plastic thing you can put up at the top, but it always strips, it never really works. So just do that as much as you can. And when you can't any longer, it's okay because Mother Earth will take care of the rest of it. Mother Earth will take care of the rest of it. So there we go. We have our zoodles. We have lemon. You want a pow of lemon flavor, you get some lemon zest. Make sure you wash your lemon ahead of time. And if it's organic, it's that much better. Get a little lemon zest and you get a pow of lemon flavor. Yum, yum, yum. Now we're going to take my wonderful new, thank you, Caitlin, lemon juicer. And we're going to put some fresh lemon juice on here. This is wonderful for the compost, but it's also wonderful for your garbage disposal. So use that for your garbage disposal. It really cleans it out. I know they send the, sell these things called plunks or plings or something. I saw it at Bed Bath & Beyond. Like, why would you need that to clean out your garbage disposal when you can just throw a lemon down there? Yeah, why not throw a lemon down? What else do we need in here? We need some salt. Yes, you're gonna put pepper, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna put pepper, but I want you to remember salt enhances flavor, pepper alters flavor, okay? pepper alters flavor. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil on there, put as much or as little as you want. And there you have it, fresh zoodle salad. You're gonna mix this up and you're going to serve this as is. It is surprisingly simple and surprisingly delicious. The other thing we're going to add to it, I almost forgot, is you're going to get your parsley and you're going to add it at the very end. See how, don't use the stems, they get a little bitter, but don't be afraid if some of the stems get in there. My sister would sit there and strip each piece individually and that drives me nuts. I can't do that with parsley because I don't mind a little bit of stem. You see how I'm chopping? Okay, fingers out of the way, point of the tip down, hold your knife like so and just pivot the knife back and forth and you can mince it a little bit more if you want. Never pick up your vegetables with your blade, it dulls the blade, pick it up with a scooper of sorts, okay? All right, zoodle salad, who is going to make some zoodle salad now? Who is going to make some zoodle salad, anybody? You strip them? Yeah, it's 
fine. I just, I don't have time for that. I'm lazy. <laughs> I'm lazy. I don't have time for that. So I don't care if there's a little bit of stem. I just don't want all stem in there. So there we have it. Our beautiful zoodle salad. Who's going to make some zoodle salad? Yay. Very good. Very good. Next, we are going to, I want to wash my hands of the garlic that I have on them because I don't want my popsicles to taste like garlic. Who wants garlic flavored popsicles? Ooh. Um, talking about herbs though, talking about herbs, you can make a popsicle using the mint if you want. But let me show you how easy it is to make popsicles. I just wanna get some of these things out of the way so that we, again, we don't have garlic smelling popsicles. You can do the, I'm gonna do this with coconut milk. I'm gonna do it with coconut milk. Oh boy, did I have these sitting out for too long? I did, darn it. Oh, well, I made the popsicles, but uh, I let them sit out for too long. So it's, I'm not gonna be able to show you taking them out, but that's okay. I have this wonderful popsicle mold and I figured, oh, let it sit on the counter for, for a couple of minutes. Well, it's a couple minutes too long, but anyhow, you can buy one of these popsicle molds, but you don't have to. You could also do it in one of these egg molds or in ice cube trays. It's not really the whole popsicle effect, but at least you have something cold and fun to drink. So we're gonna start with coconut cream, a jar of coke, a can of coconut cream, okay? And do not do the light. They add some kind of something to coconut cream that's in that's light in a can. You don't want to do that. And don't do coconut cream um, in, I mean, coconut milk. It's not coconut milk. You can do this with uh, yogurt. I would do Greek yogurt if you want to use a yogurt version versus a coconut cream version. But I'll tell you, I love the flavor of these with the coconut. Who loves coconut? Put coconut in the chat. Put coconut in the chat if you love coconut. Coconut is antiviral, antibacterial, antimicrobial. It is phenomenal for you, your family, everybody that you love. And even if you don't love them, love them and give them some um, that coconut, coconut milk, coconut oil. We're gonna put about a tablespoon or a teaspoon of some really good vanilla. Don't chintz on the vanilla. Don't chintz on the vanilla because it can make or break the flavor. We're gonna put a little bit of lemon juice so half a lemon. Save that for the compactor. And there we go. I'm going to put a pinch of salt. Salt tends to pop the flavor. So I just put a tiny pinch, just a tiny, tiny, tiny pinch. I'm going to put a sweetener in here. I could put dates if I wanted to. And if the dates are not um, soft, uh, put a little hot water on them for a little bit and take the pit out. And, but I'm going to use monk fruit for my sweetener. Monk fruit literally is from a fruit and there, and it's sweet, much sweeter than regular sugar. And it does not spike your insulin. And I'm going to put about a quarter cup of some monk fruit. You can get confectioner sugar or you can get granular monk fruit. Love monk fruit, love the stuff, love the stuff, love it. Next we're going to do, where are my strawberries? Anybody see strawberries? Ah, there they are, strawberries. We're going to get some beautiful, look how gorgeous these are. I wanna to talk to you about strawberries. Who here has noticed when they eat strawberries, they just don't taste as good as they did when we were kids. Has anybody noticed that? Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. Anybody notice the strawberries? Is it different? You can do stevia. You can do stevia as well. Yeah. 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 What is it? What is about that? What is up with that? And when was the last time you had organic strawberries? But treat yourself. I, I did an experiment. I bought strawberries from Aldi's and then I was at mom's last night and I, not mom's, um, I was at Whole Foods last night and I bought, I splurged and it's okay. Why not? I got the organic strawberries. I have not tasted a strawberry so incredibly delicious in quite a while. These strawberries are out of this world. You're gonna put about 10 strawberries in here. I don't bother with those stupid gadgets to take the whole, the, the, the thing off. 
just do it with a knife, no problem. I'm gonna put all those strawberries, oh my gosh, the, I wanna eat this as opposed to putting it in here. I just want you to know, I almost ate it, almost. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm on camera. Shouldn't be eating when I'm camera and it's for the recipe. All right, here we go. Simple, very, very simple. And if you wanted to add some mint to that, add some mint, it'll add a little pizzazz of a flavor in there. I need the lid. You don't have to have a Vitamix. This is a Vitamix, you don't have to have it, but we're just gonna turn it on for a few moments and then we will be ready to go. That's it, just enough so that it's blended. And look, if you wanted to eat it just like this, go for it. Otherwise, pour it into an, a, a popsicle mold. You can buy these easily. And the, the, the beauty of the popsicle mold is that it's got this lid that goes over the top of it and you put the sticks right on top. And I'm so sorry that I took these out too early because I, won't, I was gonna take one out for you so I could show it to you but it's way too soft now because I had it, I made these last night so that I can show you, but oh well. Let me see if this will come out. See, this is half coming out. What, I, what I'll do is I'll take them all out once they're frozen and not sitting on the counter for, for this long, is I'll take them all out and put them into plastic little baggies because otherwise it can get absorb the flavors from the freezer. So I'll just put each and every one of them into these little baggies. Anyhow, that's that. I'll put that back in the freezer. Um, but since I only have one ice cream mold, I'm going to use my egg mold. Why not? Use whatever you have. My egg molds and my ice cube trays. But let's see how the egg mold does. Let's see how the egg mold does. In our last few minutes together, I would love, Caitlin is going to put in the chat a link to uh, a, a free ebook that I have called the Joyful Gut Reboot Guide. It's a book that I wrote all about the basics of how to have a joyful gut because I truly believe that we are in this life for joy and that our, it starts with our bellies. So we wanna have joyful get bellies. We don't wanna have gas and bloating and exhaustion and all of that. We wanna be happy in our lives. So if you want that uh, and be part of my tribe, and if not, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. Um, go ahead and click on that link. Also, I would love to know, what have you found most valuable about our time together today? What is that one thing that you're gonna take away today and go, yes, I got that. Yes, I'm going to do that. What is that one thing? Go ahead and type, what did you find most valuable about our time together today in that chat box? Let me see. Zoodle, the zoodles, awesome, yep, the zoodles. Use fresh garlic, yep, that's right. It was time-saving start to finish meal course. Yes, that's right, that's absolutely right. Yes, that's awesome. Anything else that you found most valuable about our time together today, go ahead and type that in the chat. Go ahead and click on that link and get my free ebook, to the Joyful Gut Reboot Guide. And you see what I did? I, I put little slits in the, uh, the plastic I put popsicle sticks in there I got from the dollar store and I'll put this on a tray in the freezer for a couple of hours and then pop them out later and they'll be fun. And, and again, if you wanted to put some herbs in there, why not strawberries and mint? That would be nice. Strawberries and rosemary, not so much. Maybe basil would be good in there too. Salad in a jar, how to use your fresh herbs. Oh good, I'm so glad that I gave you some really good pointers on how to use your fresh herbs. And, you know, and anything else that you found valuable, definitely please type that in the chat. I hope that you all had a fun time with me today. And I wanna say thank you from the top to the bottom to the middle of my heart. Uh, for being here, for all of your love, all of your wonderful participation. And until next time, namaste. Bye for now, everyone. Bye for now. Have a great day.